Chicago, New York, all them places. I guarantee you, eighty to ninety percent of them ain't got a a stick back here in the South where they left. Where right. they left out of North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi. All that land that they mamas and daddies had. They let it go. They let it go. Not every, not everybody, but the vast majority did. They didn't, they didn't yeah. want anything else to do with, you know, down here. And okay. now that they went on there and made a living, when it, when it, when it came time to retire, now they want to come back, but they ain't got nothing to come back to. They ain't got nothing to come back to. Nothing. And what makes it so bad? Go ahead. Go ahead. Another thing I want to say about reparations, okay, why is America paying the so-called Jews reparations when the Holocaust didn't even happen over there? That happened, over, that happened in Europe, in Germany. Why, why is America paying those people reparations when that, that struggle didn't even happen? That's what I want to know. And, and in fact, though, with every nation – that got stepped on and dogged on and dogged out before. They got they get paid. The Japanese got paid. So did the, the so being being put in them camps. Right, the so-called Jews got paid. Mm-hmm. And that didn't even happen. Yet. But when it comes to the, the the American black man, I mean, what did we get? We built the country. You know, everybody came over and benefited out what we built. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we st- yeah we're still at the bottom of the total pole, still trying to struggle to move. And since King, you know, th- today would have been his 90th birthday. Mm-hmm. And since it's a special day today, if we look at he's been gone 50 years. We ain't did nothing but go down since he left. Mm-hmm. Now in 1910, look at this. In 1910, do you know we own 20 million acres in the South? 20 million acres in 1910. That was the period. That was the period right after Reconstruction. Mm Mm-hmm. Today, we own one percent. We barely own one percent. Now, I'm going to tell you now, in my family, we still own everything that mama and daddy and grandmama and granddaddy left us. We own every stick of it. Still own it. Right. Now, I'm going to, in, 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 in where we live, it's a source of jealousy, and, and, and they talk about you rich and all this kind of stuff. What, you ain't rich. All you're doing is paying taxes on what your folks left you. Right. <laughs> right. That's a big. Now, mm-hmm. Now I don't know about your family. What your your history is and what they did back then. Oh, I can tell I you. My what, um, my go ahead. my folks got down in Jemison. We got we own mm-hmm. about eighty acres. So my my great granddad, you know, it just passed on down. Is our property. Mm-hmm. But she, most well, people don't even have that. Mm-hmm. My pop, my dad wrote in his will that only that you can you can barter and, and back and forth with your brothers and sisters, but you can never sell the land. Right. <laughs> you can, you can you can let each other have it for a dollar. <laughs> One dollar, baby. That was smart. <laughs> I thought, that was smart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can cut the timber off and do different and different stuff, but you sure can't sell it. Right. Either way it goes, it's going to stay with the family. It's going to stay away. As long as, it, as long as that dirt there, it's going to stay in the family. Now, if you don't pay the taxes now, they get it that way now. But, right. But you, you, you ain't going to sell it. <laughs> right. The only way yeah. you you lose it if you don't pay the tax. That's it. And that's that's the government. Right. Uh, my my um 
My uh, father was the insurance salesman. He uh, wrote burial policies and uh, insurance policies and stuff like that. So when he died, guess what? Everything was right. paid for. Everything. Right. Same thing that you're talking about. Insurance policy. Didn't owe nothing. Owe nothing. And it was ten of us. Didn't owe nobody. Nobody. Man. That's that's that's, that's, that's supposed that's to be. Po- that's yeah. Now we 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 talking about One finances. Thing. Go ahead. One thing about it, when you leave this earth, you gonna either you go. One thing about it, when you leave this earth, you gonna either be one or two things. You either gonna be a burden or a blessing. It's your choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So don't don't be a mm-hmm. burden in life and one in death. Mm-hmm. From 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 your perspective, uh, uh, from what you experience in your life, what would be your uh, advice to us as a uh, um, a race of people, so far as finances. Uh, we got to start practicing group economics. That's mm-hmm. one. You know, Exp- we don't spend what Exp- I own. I, 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 yeah, okay, go ahead. That's what I'm about to ask you. I understand what it is, but explain it to our listeners. All right, we don't we don't spend with our own. We go outside our own community for everything we need. We can build an infrastructure within our own community, and our dollar can circulate multiple times before it go outside a black hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we got to do. Until we learn how to do that, ain't nothing gonna change. Cause economics is that's that's the foundation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, let's move to. Um, Let's go to another subject, racism. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the studio, <clears throat> and I'm gonna play um, something similar to what we did uh, on the um, about the your tennis mindset. Shoes. Yeah, about the tennis shoes. And this is uh, <clears throat> black folks in the world called the black folks in the world nigger. And uh, this, this, when they say the word nigger, we will cut a white man airway but loose to use him to call another nigger. But yet and still we call each other nigger. Now here's the thing about racism. Racism is a insidious uh, system in, in in America. It is one of the most insidious, degrading processes that, that ever existed. In other words, they developed it from from the ground up how to make us hate each other, make us, you know, um, put each other down. Now. Same like like you said, we won't trade with each other. A black man come and take all we got to, to take the shirt off our back. We go back the next day and trade with him again the next day, but you let a, a right. black man, you let a black man stuff his toe, or come up one nail missing on the project, and you go for forty years without hiring another black man to do anything else. But anyway, right? Then didn't talk bad about him. Woo! What you said? What you said? Didn't talk. I'm, on the, didn't talk bad about ahead. him to everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play this clip. It, it runs about, about four minutes or so. And you talk okay. on the other side of it. All right. That bill is dead or you're going to get 33 votes. I'm sick and tired of white people setting the standard for our children. Benson High School, the little racist, had white adults decide to put out a paper dealing with the N-word. White adults, white children are the ones on the paper and decided to do this. And it come up with the conclusion that if you put A on the end of the word, instead of E-R, it's a term of endearment. These white people are talking about this word that is the most degrading, insulting word that can be used for us. The World Herald praised them. White people praised them. They say these white students have courage. 
If I use profanity, you'd hear me use it on the floor this morning. But I'm not like white people. I won't do that. But they're going to get some of these white kids hurt. You use that word with an A or an ER, and I would tell any black child, bust him in the mouth. Knock his teeth out. Teach him what these white people will not teach them. You're going to have these white people in a school predominantly black with predominantly white teachers teaching these white children that it's all right to use that word, that it can be cleaned up. You clean up manure by spraying perfume on it, and then I'll tell you you can clean up these words. That's what white people do. Then they want to tell me I shouldn't be offended. They're not the ones to determine what insulting things are all right for our children. Now, if somebody in here had a child who's in special education and I ridiculed that child, that person would be offended and outraged. But when it comes to our children, it does not count. White people know. And this little white girl, who is the editor of the paper, is saying, well, we did just what we wanted to do. We wanted to have discussion. Well, in one of the elementary schools, a white boy called a black child that word with an A on the end of it and said, you have to let me call you that because it's all right. Well, that child didn't hit him back. He called him white trailer trash peckerwood. And he was sent to the office and told, we don't allow name calling here, but nothing was said to the white child. And then when this black child, who is insulted, hits that white child in the mouth, the black child is expelled. You all create impossible conditions for our children. Do it among the adults so that an adult can test it on me. Use that word with me and let me give a whipping or take a whipping. But don't put my child in a classroom setting and these white people are going to decide that it's all right to play with that word. This is not playtime when you deal with that word. This is a dangerous game you're putting those little racists in. One minute. You're starting them out young and telling them, you be just like me. And we're not going to teach people that this language is inappropriate. We're going to teach you that it is all right. And tell these black children, you have to accept it because white people own you. And when the black parents were outraged. The World Herald didn't talk about that. They talked about how outraged these white people got when the principal was put on paid leave. And because white people got upset, they brought her back. But what about our feelings? The feelings of our children who go to these schools controlled by white people. Then that education committee thinks they're going to get a bill through this legislature that leaves everything as it is. Well, as long as I have breath in my body and I'm a member of this legislature, I will fight that bill. And if you get 33 votes, I will fight every other bill. And you need to know where things are. And the only way you know is if I tell you. Why Time. don't they do that to me? I can defend myself. Time, Senator. And I will. But our children, I'll die and go to hell ten times for our children. Perspective of a legislature, legislator, fighting about the word nigger. And here's the thing about that, Willie. I want you to give your perspective. I know you heard what he was saying, and you have your perspective on what is happening to us <coughs> when it comes to racism and the nigger and all this type of other things that they use. But I think that's that's like um, you heard of the Twilight Zone. I am. Now here's the thing about that. Now, if you take the example today, what the government was doing, so forth, censoring King on on using his racist term, and he'd been talking like that for thirty years. He'd been talking like that for thirty years, saying what he wanted to. And he's being legitimized by President Trump on the issue of racism in America. From your perspective, oh, that, was your a, that was a senator from Iowa. Yeah. Steve King. Steve King. Oh, from, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's been talking racist ever since he's been in, in Congress. He said all kinds of stuff. Talking about you can't, uh, we can't uh, regenerate America's white blood by using uh, uh, you know 
Mexicans and other other people. You know, white folks got to. You know what? You ain't gonna regenerate.